Okay, we're in a break. Um, and uh, Dr. Reed, are you there? Yes. Um, listen, I did ask um, earlier. Uh, uh, now, I have abided by the wishes uh, of Robert, and I have not used anything from the videotape, but if you have any audio at all from that videotape at some point. I have it queued up. You have all. Oh. And now you're speaking of the wood scene with the breathing? Yes, uh huh. That's what I've got queued up. All right. Uh, queued excellent. it up right after the uh, <clears throat> swearing. Um, uh, thank you. Yeah, there were some words in there that uh, could not be repeated on radio. Right. All right, um, everybody stand by. Uh, you've got a good, um, oh, I don't know, about a five- or six-minute break. And right. uh, Yes. Is this any better? I switched the phone. Um, did you hang up the other one? Yes, I did. No, actually, your other phone's better if you just <laughs> if you just stayed right into it. Okay. The key I'll is go back to the other one. The key is to stay right into that phone. Yeah, talk louder. Don't you know? Don't let it uh, drift away from your chin. All right. Uh, excuse me, your mouth. A lot of people sort of let it drop down to their chin. So yeah, I'll switch back to the other one. Stand by, everybody. And the Azar. Once again, here I am. Good uh, morning, everybody. My guests are Robert Braid, who originally got my attention by sending me a fax using one of my favorite expressions from. Uh, Contact, the movie Contact, said, want to take a ride. <laughs> That's how it all began. And now, Dr. Jonathan Reed, the man who had the encounter with this creature in the woods in Washington. We've got the photographic proof. If you want to see it, it's up there on the web right now. You're going to also tonight hear some of the audio as well. I just found out. So... Stand by for that. Uh, we'll get back to our guests and resume the story of what happened to Dr. Jonathan Reed in just a moment. Don't go away. All right, let us continue now with the story uh, from Dr. Reed, Jonathan Reed. Uh, doctor, so I guess we left off at the point where you were describing this creature uh, physically, which you pretty well did, very skinny limbs, uh, very fast movements, um, I had uh, kind of like a gray, but not quite. Uh, that can be seen on my website, but for those who don't have it, uh, th there you have it. Uh, that is a general description. If you had to guess on a weight, and I guess you don't have to guess, you probably know by now, how much did this creature weigh? 50 pounds. 50? Extremely light. Very light, all right. Um, so you hit this creature, um, you struck this creature in the head, then what? I mean, did it go down right away? It fell to the ground instantly. And uh, as it fell, it screamed this just terrible scream. Not, like nothing I had ever heard before. Um, not that I've ever crushed a human skull, Doctor. But... Um, you wielded this uh, this stick or this brass stick, I guess, like a baseball bat, you said. Yeah. And you hit this creature. Uh, did its skull, uh, obviously from the photograph of the injury, the skull was uh, breached. Yes, it was. Um, did the skull breach more easily uh, than a human skull would have under the same conditions, do you think? I don't know how hard you swung that thing. Well, I swung fairly hard. I'm surprised I hit it because I'm not an athlete, but it it uh, hit hard enough to tear a hole in the skin and in bone material approximately an inch and a half by an inch, exposing the inner uh, material. Um, in the picture, it would appear there is blood. It would appear to be blood. It's red, some kind of red material. Is that what we're seeing in the photograph? Blood? Yes. Blood. All right. So the creature screams this horrible scream and goes down, and and no more movement uh, from it? No That's more it? movement at all. It's dead. As far as I knew, it was dead. So and at that moment, I was an emotional basket case. I imagine you were. All right. What did you do next? I mean, okay, let's go to the, the third picture. We've got two pictures of the creature, and then we've got a third photograph of what to me appears to be an elongated, an, an elongated black, 
Triangle ship literally hovering uh, in the middle of the forest. How far was this from the creature? That was probably 75 feet away from where the creature was. 75 feet. Mm -hmm. Through some brush and uh, kind of down in a little valley on the other side. All right. Um, the photography is difficult because we look at the, uh, the plants in the foreground, and it makes the ship look small, relatively small. Well, the dimensions right. of the ship were relatively small, and I'm not necessarily saying it is a ship. I'm saying it, it is uh -huh. something. Okay, okay, yeah, we made that assumption. You're absolutely correct uh, that it was a ship. It um, is an object. It uh, is an object which we I ended up calling the obelisk for lack of a better description. But it was a large wedge-shaped uh, black triangle. Uh, it had six sides. Uh, it was flat-pointed in the front and flat-pointed in the back. It wasn't symmetrical. It was longer one end than the other. That's clear. Uh, it was made of a material that felt like granite or marble. Did you do touch it? Yes, I did. Oh, oh my God. It's, so you walked up after the creature's dead, lying there on the ground. How after you... about an hour. An hour? I heard something. I heard something that sounded like a hum. You remained in that location for an hour. I remained in that location for over three hours. What did you do during this time? I was so sick, I basically couldn't move. And I had... What, what were your I, symptoms? Well, I had a, definitely an emotional breakdown as far as not knowing what had happened. At first, I thought I had killed a child. And I had to, I had to make sure that this wasn't a child. I understand. And then I, after seeing with? what had happened with Susie, a dog that I'd had for years, I was very, very upset. I was very disturbed. I was sick to my stomach. I would try to stand and walk. I was dizzy. I would become nauseated. I barely could stand. I would sit back down. I would cry, trying to figure out what was happening. And I suppose you had, no doubt, some guilt about Absolutely. having killed. Uh, you, you killed a some kind of creature. Well, at that point, you didn't I, know what I kill. don't know that my mind was trying to logically assume that this was a creature. All I had known was everything had fallen apart. And I felt totally disoriented. And so for an hour, you were just... You were just sick and in shock, and after an hour, you recovered enough, I take it, to begin to notice your surroundings beyond this creature in front of you, and that's when you noticed what you're calling the obelisk. I noticed a sound in the air that almost felt like it touched my skin. It almost gave me goosebumps, and I followed that sound because I thought it might be another person. Of course. I thought it might be somebody could, who could help me because I needed help. At that point, I, need, I needed help. And I, I went toward that sound thinking it might be another camper or something in the area. Sure. And as I went farther and farther, I started to feel like there was something else there, another presence. And to describe that is very difficult. It's almost like static electricity when you walk into a room when it's very, very cold outside. Yes and your hair stands up on the back of your neck? Yes. That's what it felt like. And then I backed away. I was afraid. I didn't know what was going on. And I kind of ran down the path and again fell to the ground. I was sick. I got up after some time and, and walked back. And, and from a different angle, I started to see through the bushes that there was something through the bushes, through the trees. 